welcome to Might Beat Coin Stories, and today we have a special guest, my one of my dearest friend, Mark Kwan. Hi, Mark. Hi, dear. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, um, Mark is the founder. Uh, can I say founder of Onion Collective? And um, he is also I consider to be my mentor, and then is very much into Bitcoin. Um, and we can talk a little bit about uh, his journey, you know, like how he, uh, as a small business owner, like how Bitcoin also helped the, uh, the, uh, the restaurant business. So like Onion Collective is actually a place, like there is a, um, there is a co-working space in there. There is a restaurant. It's a hub for people to, uh, to connect and then yeah share share their ideas and then be you know take uh, bringing out their best potential kind of like that but i think mark will will explain more about onion collective probably well the onion co um, basically is a place where we've got a restaurant there and we've got a co-working space and we've got rooms to stay and we, we're like you yes you like you said yeah we are a, we were a hub like I say we're because we've been inactive for the past year because of COVID. Can't wait to get back into action. But we've always been a hub and a place and a meeting space for new minds and new ideas. And I think uh, way back then, Bitcoin was one of the new ideas that, that came on board. Um, and that was, I think, in 2012. So, yeah, in essence, I think that's what the Onion is. It's a hub for people, a meeting space for yeah. people to come and exchange new ideas. Yeah, and, and then, grow them. <laughs> and it's not only just, uh, yeah, it's not only just a space. It's there's so much going on in there. I remember when I first uh, live in Ubud, and then uh, this is just like the the recent time when I bought Bitcoin, and then like I saw in two thousand back in two thousand sixteen where you know a lot of places can accept Bitcoin in Indonesia. I saw in at the onion they accept bitcoin and that's like i thought like wow this place is so cool that you can pay stuff you can stay and then eat with you know paying it with bitcoin i thought you know it's really cool but yeah, those uh, were the good old days yeah <laughs> it was the good old days exactly <laughs> and then like right now like uh yeah bitcoin cannot be accepted uh in in indonesia because the legal tender is in rupiah you know, just for the uh people to know but people but people can use bitcoin um as a reserve and then like uh yeah like as an asset in here in indonesia right right so uh in today's podcast i actually really want to talk about um relationship with money and then why is it important to cultivate a healthy relationship with money before you buy Bitcoin? And Mark is, is real like this is one of the topics that he's passionate about, right? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> relationship with money. Exactly. So yeah, so Mark, uh, yeah, why, um, like how is your relationship with money? You know, like maybe you can, we can start from there. My relationship with money is getting better, right? And um, it's a constant journey, but um, at one point of time, I had a very fixed belief that the only way to make money would be to work very hard for it. And it's painful. The process has to be painful. And for most of my life, that's exactly <laughs> how it turned out to be until I started changing and getting around that mindset and belief. Mm -hmm. And so my relationship with money has changed drastically over the past few years. Um, and uh, the results are showing. <laughs> so um, that's when I started to really understand and realize that the relationship that we have with money and the thoughts that we have with money or about money basically dictate how much money uh, we have or how much money we have access to. Mm -hmm. um, because I was at a point where I really didn't understand what money was. I mean, I just knew that money is something that you use to buy stuff and you that, that can make you happy and all that. But there's a whole process behind 
the ideology of money mm-hmm. and what money is today right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think really understanding that, just to answer your question, is very, very important. Uh, and my, my relationship with it has improved <laughs> tremendously mm-hmm. and changed uh, and is constantly changing mm-hmm. over the past few years. So what, uh, I mean, like, what did most people do wrong, you know, when they, when they, when they see their relationship with money, you know, you, we, we, you talk a lot about this during the mentorship, but like, what is, what is the, the block that people have when it comes to money? Well, one of the biggest blocks is that money is dirty. Mm. Money is a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And because of that, it's something that we've never really, or I never really looked at. I never really gone in and study money, where it came from, how, you know, what creates money, how do you create wealth? And I never really went into the study of that until I came to a point in my life where I realized that, whoa, if I don't start learning about this thing, or getting the control of this, I'm not going to be able to enjoy my life as much mm-hmm. as I want to. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was that stark reality, you know, it's like, there's so many things that I want to do and you need money to do it. And, but without having that, that, knowledge of what money is and how to use it and how to make it and how without really going in deep with it you you cannot you 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 are subject to oh luck you're subject to um you know someone else's giving you some money or or the stroke of you know of genius or luck that will that will you know just give you a windfall Mm -hmm. but once you understand the process of making money once you understand how money will moves in the world Mm. You understand the monetary system, right? You have a better understanding, a better foundation of how to create wealth. Mm-hmm. And I think, so one of the beliefs uh, that, 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 that we have is that, that, that money is dirty. It's a bad thing. It's not looked at, especially if you come from an Asian family. It's something mm. that you don't even talk about. You know, you don't talk about money. It's like, you know, but I think it's one of the, if not one of the most important things to learn, right? In this life and get a hold of. It's relationship with yourself and relationship with money. These two things. And there's no way you can get a better, clearer understanding of your relationship with yourself than through your relationship with money. So this is a, is a stark question that all of us have to ask ourselves. Like, what is our relationship with money? Do we even dare to look at our accounts? I think a lot of us, and I went through this most certainly in my life, like afraid to even open my bank account to see what account my balance was in there. Because every time it was it was going down, right? So uh, all these kind of things are definitely a big block, big block to you know to, to having these emotions revolve around money is a big block to attaining more wealth mm. and attaining more understanding. So it puts us in a state of fear, mm. and you know whenever you're in a state of fear, you're not growing. When you're in a state of fear, you're regressing. Mm, and the nice. way the best one of the best ways to overcome fear is to have an understanding about it to start to learn to actually take the time to learn mm. so you're talking about like yeah from this state of fear right so like how like a lot of people like have a lot of fears when it comes to money like they're afraid that they don't, they don't have enough they're afraid that um you know it makes them uh, maybe people don't like them maybe like a lot of people think that they are arrogant or something yeah. like that right so like how <laughs> <laughs> so how do you uh, yeah how, how to overcome that like what do you think like how to overcome this kind of mindset Well, the first thing you need to determine in yourself first, right, is you need to determine whether money is important for you and whether you want money. Mm -hmm. You need to determine, you need to determine that. Mm -hmm. If you're still stuck in a situation where you believe that money is bad, it's a dirty thing and it's not good, blah, 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 Mm -hmm. then you're not going to attract money. But if you can really clear and say, listen, I really like money, uh, Right, I know that it's a tool that I can use, and I, I, my relationship with it is healthy. And okay, I just want to learn how to make more money. How can I make more money? It's only then that you can start to expand your thinking. So that's step one. You need to determine what your relationship with you, money, and you need to determine what, how, whether you want money or not. 
And once mm. you decide how you, you want money, the next thing is that, and your fear, your mind is kicking in saying that, oh, no, you're going to be a, a sombo when you get rich and it's not good. It's going to change you, blah, blah, blah. You got to understand that that's just your mind and your mind is not so important. And you got to understand, has your mind taken you to a good place so far or has it made you poorer? So you got to tell your mind, you know, okay, you can stay poor, but let's try and think a different way. Let's try and study. Let's try and learn something different. Let's open the mind. Let's quiet the mind, sorry, and open my heart up and open my soul up to something that's different and new possibility, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's the way to overcome the fear. The way to overcome the fear is really get clear on what you want. And when you get mm. clear on what you want, then you start to learn light. Light is the only way to overcome any sort of darkness, any sort of fear. And that's to shed light on it. So if you say you're fearful about investing into cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. Study it, learn it, right? Study it, learn, learn something new. No one's asking you to throw your savings in it, but maybe you could put 5%, mm -hmm. right? Just put 5% in and experience, open a wallet, learn how to open a wallet, learn how to transfer, learn how to set your own keys. These are these are steps that along the way we need to learn, you know, it's a learning process. And the only way to learn this is to do it. Right. Yeah. A lot of people don't, don't you know, a lot of people is talking about the, the money behind it, but there's, 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 there's these actual steps that you need to take that, you know, you need to start learning how to look at how to like the simple step, like how to open a wallet mm -hmm. and how to transfer your money from your bank to your, to your wallet. Right. And then mm. looking at the price. And the only way you're going to learn that is to put in 50,000 rupiah, 100,000 rupiah into it and start learning it that way. Yeah. And if you're lucky, it'll go up by 3% today and tomorrow maybe 3%. And you know, I mean, so, but, but that's the only way to be not stuck in the fear. Yeah. To not be fearful. Uh, there's someone who said that fear is just... Uh, the unknown so because you don't know so you fear yeah so fear is unknown and, and yeah and it's all played out in the mind mm -hmm. there's the mind is playing out the fear the mind is telling you the story and that story that the mind is telling you will keep you in your loop yeah and if you want to get out of your loop right you need to start to quiet the mind and be in the moment and go with the flow. Easier said than done. That's the biggest challenge of all is that. <laughs> yeah. that quieting the mind, seriously. Yeah. So why, why do you think it's important to cultivate this, this healthy relationship with money before you buy Bitcoin? Well, once again, like it's a tool. Bitcoin mm -hmm. is a fantastic, amazing tool. Mm -hmm. And so is the rupiah, all right? I mean, and also that we, we use rupiah to buy our nasi nasi champur today and to buy our bakso in the evening and, you know, to pay our bill district. Okay, now you can use GoPay and all that. But I mean, we're using legal tender, right? Money to do yeah. that. So that's important. But also Bitcoin is important. I mean, without a fact, it is the best investment, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, for the past two years, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, better than gold, better than stocks, better than anything, right? Mm -hmm. And and so, um, okay, maybe GameStop has <laughs> overthrown us over the past couple of days, but but um, you know what I mean. So it is a tool for it's an investment tool. It's a tool. It's a tool to be used to grow your wealth. It's a tool to be used to keep your wealth. Mm -hmm. So if you have an understanding of what money is you have an understanding of what relationship you have with wealth with abundance with money mm -hmm. then you can start to use the tool the right way mm -hmm. if you're not using the tool the right way then you're putting yourself at risk to losing more money mm -hmm. which means that your mindset is still stuck on the i don't like money and i don't want money because then you're mm -hmm. not even taking the time to learn it you're buying something because someone told you to buy it or you know you're jumping into something that you that you are you're not really learning about that you can blame your failure mm -hmm. to 
I'll blame my, oh, I got poor because I invested in Bitcoin. Oh, and then it'll be the same story. I got poor because I invested into Tesla. I got, I got poor because I invested. I got poor because I didn't invest. I got poor because, <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't listen to people. You know, if you don't fix your own relationship with money itself and wealth itself, you're going to be able to blame everything and everything else about you for you staying poor, for you not getting richer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's. I mean, even the word "richer" I right, feels like a like a dirty word to say, right? Like, ah, how can you be all oh, so money, 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 man? It's 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 a good thing about it's it's important, I think, you know, to learn about money if you want to be rich, you know, mm-hmm. if you want to be rich and you want money, and then what you do with it is up to you. But you gotta get really, really clear. What is your relationship with money? I, can you go to bed at night feeling that wow? I, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I like money. I want more. Can you go to bed like actually like, you know, uh, <laughs> actually feeling that, mm-hmm. right? And if you can't, then maybe it's something that you need to look at. Yeah, that's very interesting because this is like something that is unconscious, right? Like there's so much programming happening, uh, you know, related to money and then... Uh, what I see like from what you said is that in order to build a good relationship with money, first you need to understand what is money. You need to also know what is your fear, making awareness about what is your fear around money. And then right. you know, you start making a right decision for money, you know. Is it- right. You know, and things will happen in a way that you will flow into it. It will happen mm-hmm. naturally. Mm-hmm. Like suddenly you'll be recommended the right book or suddenly you're going to hear the right podcast or suddenly because you you start to become open and receptive to it. Yeah. You know, one of the things where we need to understand, right? One of the things that I have understood this year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that has been so powerful is that I am so small and minuscule to the whole grand scheme of the universe. Mm-hmm. And it's, it is absolutely ridiculous for me to worry and to think and to, to be in a state of fear because we're living in a miracle, man. Like if you really think about it, the earth is spinning mm-hmm. and we're going around the sun at a thousand kilometers an hour and the whole universe is traversing through the universe and revolving around one another. And we're still on this pl- <laughs> we're still on this planet. We're still having this conversation. We still can breathe. I had a beautiful walk on the beach today. Eat, can enjoy. We still got, you know, I can't explain it, but this year, just understanding how small I was and I am. It's such a relief <laughs> because things are happening automatically. Mm-hmm. We just need to tune ourselves and put ourselves in the right frame mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? But how do we know whether you're in the right frame mind? Because just well, you're with the flow, you go with the flow. But if your mind is closed and you say, "No, I don't want to," no, I no, I mean, and you're in your in your fixing your way. And you're fixed in your way. You're fixed in only this way, and there's no other way. Then you're not open to the wisdom of the universe. That is so much wiser. <laughs> that is so much wiser than us. Yeah. Right. The universal wisdom, or God wisdom, or you know, it's like so much more wiser than us. And we think we're so smart, man. Tomorrow we know what's going to happen. You know, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we have no clue what's going to happen. Honestly, we don't, right? Yeah. I mean, as realizing that, right? Realizing that and being open to learn something new, being open to learn a new way of thinking, a new way of mastering your mind mm-hmm. is such an important step. Exactly. <laughs> it starts from the want, right? Like you need to know what you want. And sometimes people ask the like they 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 unconsciously uh saying things that opposite what they say like you know they think like 
they want to be rich but their their behavior and the way they they do it's on the poor mindset so like you said it's it's, it's from the one And then if you know, if you get clear on what you want, then the universe is just gonna, you know, work, work, work it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. You know, there's two, I've been reading this book called Market Wizards, right? And it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. One of the great traders, it's an interview with all the great traders of the world. Hmm. One of the great, one of the great traders said, In, in his interview, he said, there's basically two views of the universe that you can adopt. One is that the universe is a friendly place. Mm -hmm. And one is that the universe is out to kill you and get you and take all your money. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's so much better to adopt the first view. And in that, in anything with life, to have a belief that the universe has somehow got your back. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like one of the most comforting beliefs uh, that anyone could ever have. Like, I mean, for me, it, it, I adopted that right now. Mm -hmm. And it's been in my meditation every day. Is that mm -hmm. the universe is there for me. You know why? Because I'm so small. I'm on this planet. It's spinning. It's doing all sorts of things. The plants are growing. The waves are crashing in and all that. And I'm still alive this morning. I'm alive. I'm bright. I'm thinking. I'm like excited about what's happening next. It's like, it's a miracle. <laughs> this universe is really an amazing place to be. <laughs> right? Yeah. And this is something that you need to bring to your you need to bring to your table you need to bring to to your investment you need to be your thinking you need to bring this into your relationships mm -hmm. into your relationship with yourself into your relationship with money you need to bring this mindset because how much of our our mindset is based on fear the world's out to get me it's going to take all my money it's going to kill me right? and then we start doing things in that mindset and guess what we're manifesting that we're creating more and more of that in our lives mm -hmm. And it shows up. It shows up that way. So if you want your life to start working out, if you want to start having a better understanding of, of, or, or even the open-mindedness to start learning something new, I think having a belief that the universe is a good and friendly place, right, is a very, mm -hmm. very important thing to have. And mm -hmm. I think the next step is that how can you put that out into the world? How can you be that? How can you vibrate that? To the people that are around you, so that they feel the same way too, is mm -hmm. is I think very important to look at. Wow, <laughs> you see, dear, a lot of us, right, are stuck in our minds. Mm -hmm. Stuck in the fear, stuck in the story, and that you that we keep telling ourselves that we've been telling ourselves ever since we were young. The same story playing over and over and over and over again in our mind. The compulsive mind. Mm -hmm. And it's always going to retract back there. So learning how to be observe that and be mindful of that is very, very important. And when you can start doing that, then you can start, then you your mind, automatically you're going to start opening up to learning new things, to learning about wealth, to learning about money, to learning about maybe there's a different way to do something. Awesome. Yeah, this is very important. <laughs> this 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 mindset thing is very important. So maybe we jump also to like uh, your Bitcoin story. So when did you first buy Bitcoin and why did you decide to buy it? And how is it your stories unravel right now? Like how Bitcoin helps your journey to understand about money? So I didn't really buy Bitcoin <laughs> until <laughs> until maybe 2017 or 2016. Mm. Right. And before that, I'd grown a very nice stack mm -hmm. by accepting Bitcoin at the Onion. Mm -hmm. So from 2013, 2013, end of 13, 2014, Um, we started accepting Bitcoin at the Onion and that stack just started to grow, grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Mm -hmm. And that gig ended, uh, I think, 2017 <laughs> when yeah. the Indonesian government said that uh, you have to use Indonesian rupiah as the legal 
form of uh, tender. Yeah. Which was fair. And then everything just quieted down after that. But before that, Ubud was becoming this Bitcoin hub. You know, it was yeah. very exciting. There were weekly meetups. And, uh, and, uh, and then after that, everyone got a bit scared. Mm-hmm. But so what happened was a digital nomad called Jose Saez. I think you know Jose too, right, dear? Have you met Jose? I don't think so. Or maybe. Well, anyway, a bunch. There were a bunch of Spanish digital nomads that were that were hanging out at the Onion all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, one night, Jose and me gone talking, and Bitcoin came up, and he says, "Do you accept Bitcoin?" I said, "What's Bitcoin?" And so he explained it to me, and I was like blown away. I was like, "That sounds so amazing, <laughs> right?" Because I was really attracted to the trustless idea of of Bitcoin that it wasn't a centralized control. Mm-hmm. That it was controlled by a consensus algorithm of, of you know of of miners you know rushing to solve an algorithm, and and then all coming in and it was basically you didn't have to trust anyone in the, the system basically worked it out so you did there was no trust in the system, and to me someone who's really studied sociology and you know social sciences all my life right trying to figure things out trust is one of those things that 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 we put so much hope on right we build marriages and we build businesses on it and and trust just can just crumble like that (laughs) so to me that whole trustless thing was like whoa this is really interesting you know Mm -hmm. and that how that we could control that no one controls this this these funds right was like that was really really interesting to me so that was the beginning. So I just started accepting it and I didn't think much of it. I was like, okay, I'm going to accept it and, you know, let's see how this grows, right? Mm-hmm. And back then, it was right after Mount Gox. Now, I didn't know about Mount Gox and all that, right? So it was okay. Right? I, if I had known about Mount Gox, I don't think I would have been like, oh, maybe, you know, I would have probably gone into the negative thinking, right? Yeah. I didn't know about Mount Gox. And if your audience doesn't know about Mt. Gox, it's when you know an exchange, the world, the first major exchange of Bitcoin, right back then, crashed, right, and the price was down to about two hundred, hundred ninety dollars. <laughs> so we started accepting it, mm-hmm. and and it started growing. I started to learn about it. I started to learn more about it and understand more about it, and and yeah, it it just became. It, it had it became I saw it take a life of its own in my mind also in my life also when I saw that how this thing could multiply my wealth it was uh, it was mind blowing and <laughs> it was exciting also at the same time to see it and I have to say I was very attracted to the whole contrarian view against the system you know against the system against the thing and you know the whole rebellious part of it I was very attracted to that. And so, you know, I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to be a part of that movement. So that's how, how that's it all how, happened. But then after and, that, you start yeah, yeah. Uh, buying and then uh, using it as a reserve for your for your restaurant business? Or not really? Correct. Right. What I was doing was then I was converting a portion of my profits, right? And saving a portion of my profits into Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and Ethereum, uh, basically Bitcoin and Ethereum. And uh, Link over the last two years, I've, I've been like buying Link, right? And thank God for that because it's really helped me helped us out through this period right now where we've totally shut down the restaurant. Uh, the co-working space is still open, and we're renting the rooms out, but it's been very quiet in Ubud. Hmm. And the same with my other property, uh, Gunung An, which we built on profits that I made from Bitcoin. Uh, That's from amazing. <laughs> the, 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 two, the, the 2017, yeah, it was, it was amazing because uh, I had come from a place of almost desperation to a place where, wow, now I can have another place and I actually can start growing things and, I, and we can start growing, growing things. But I have to say that it wasn't, I mean, the Bitcoin was a tool here, mm-hmm. but it was the mindset shift that was the real game changer. Mm. And I mean, that's why we need to go back to that is that the mindset change has to happen first. Mm-hmm. And then you have this wealth of tools available out there that is so exciting right now to use mm-hmm. that can really help you create wealth. Mm-hmm. 
So, so what was what was the the mindset shift at that time for you? Mindset shift from that time for me was not to fear wealth. Hmm. Not to fear money. Mhm. To really look at it and say, "Wow, I really need it. I can really create good and have an understanding of what money was." That then opened me up to learn what it was. Mm-hmm. It made me then look at the negative beliefs that I had around money, beliefs that I had to tell my mind, "Say it's not important. It's quiet, <laughs> <laughs> right?" Because if I had been stuck in my old mindset, I probably would not have even thought about. Bitcoin or wanting to learn about it or even maybe not even accept it not even be open to receptive to the idea to accept it mm-hmm. but because I was so open I mean back then people would be saying oh man you know bitcoin has dropped down I want to spend my bitcoin nobody people were trying to get rid of their bitcoin <laughs> back then because because the, the, the price had just come down <laughs> right from a thousand dollars the price had come down to 190 dollars 140 dollars and everyone's like trying to get rid of their bitcoin mindset right yeah yeah and yeah. if i wasn't open to it or if i was still stuck in my old ways i don't think i would have been open or receptive to the idea you'd be crazy right who would say why are you crazy to accept this but then you open to the idea and you're thinking about it right come on what am i sacrificing one hamburger and a juice <laughs> You know it's okay, right? Right, it's nothing, right? But when people started taking rooms for it, I was like, oh, yeah, why not? It's just like it's not like everyone's gonna be, you know, it's not everyone's gonna come in and use Bitcoin, mm-hmm. right? So, but just being open, then suddenly things happen naturally. Mm-hmm. So that mindset is important. That mindset is really important. You know, in this time right now, where it's a little bit stressy and everyone's thinking, "Oh, is Bitcoin going to go up? Is it going to go more? Or is it going to come down today?" Yeah, and the whole world is in this tension right right now. I tell you, right, the universe knows what's going to happen. We don't know, right? Yeah. So you need to position yourself in a place where if it goes up, it's going to be good. If it comes down, it's going to be good. I'm going to be good in 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 any yeah. which way, right? That's a good point. If, if That's a good way to see it. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> yeah, well, if, but if you're not even open to the idea, then you're closing yourself off to that option completely, right? Mm-hmm. And you're closing yourself off to that. So being having an open mind, right? Mm-hmm. Right, is understanding that is really important. Like, why? Where? Where is the mind closed? Where is the mind dark? Mm-hmm. And you know the mind is not so as important as we think it is. <laughs> That's one of my biggest lessons this year, also through COVID. Right, the mind may think it's so smart, and this lesson I've learned over and over again. The mind is thinking it's so smart, but it is not at all. Sometimes it gets lucky, but the mind honestly is more a troublemaker than. It is helpful. I mean, uh, it's helpful if it's gonna help you like brush your teeth, uh, you know, feed you and all that. But come on, all that you kind of do automatically with you. Right now, it's mostly like negative chatter or going to regret or going to anxiety. Ah, oh, that's like you know. That's why meditation, coming to a, a state of mind that is good and just falling into the lap of this universe that is just happening miraculously, mm-hmm. is the most comforting place to be. And the only way to get there is to quiet the mind down. Yeah, and let let it flow. Let the and let it flow. <laughs> and let it flow. <laughs> let the universe take care. Let of it you. flow. <laughs> let it, yeah. <laughs> let wow. the universe take care of it. But you you need to tell the mind to shut up, though. <laughs> That's true, because then the mind will go. Oh, they have like two two option: either go on fear or go on like. Um, yeah, like maybe in different mindset, but most people will go on fear based on uh, their emotional response, right? Like people, when they got fear, they, they, yeah, all their emotion is like all over the place. So they don't want that, that state. So, and then like, once you think about yeah. fear, you immediately creating the fear. Correct. We're so used to living in a state of fear that A lot of us don't even know an alternative way out. Mm-hmm. 
and learning to pay attention to that, learning to just get that step one, right, is a big step. Mm -hmm. By the way, the opposite of fear is love, dear. Yeah. It's a state of love. And if you were to really be able to see the reality of where we are right now, there's no other place that you can be but a state of love and gratitude. There's no other, because like I said, we, we it's, um, it's, it, it, we're living in this amazing universe, you know, that's just moving. The world is moving. The sun came up this morning. We should be happy and celebrate, right? Mm -hmm. It's automatic. We don't even have to pray for it and to come up, whatever. It's like, it's automatic. Suns came up. It's, it's a miracle, this universe. The plants are growing. You know, the, 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 we're breathing oxygen, it's ample, it's like, it's amazing. It's, so if, you, if, we realize, if we realize the true magnitude of where we are right now, there's no other place you can be but love and abundance. That fear is this illusion world that we're living, that our mind is made up and we're living in that world. Mm -hmm. And we're not being, we're not here, we're not with the, with the space, we're not with the trees, we're not with the, with, with the wind and the air and the light. And, and you know, we are we because we're in the mind. <laughs> exactly. There is like, um, like yesterday I was riding a taxi and then the taxi driver, like we were chatting and then the guy said, you know, in life, uh, there's birth and then death. And then between birth and death, if we see like birth start with B and then death start with D, then the middle letter is C, right? C means choice. So then between <laughs> our life and we die, we always constantly being in the state of choice. So like, which one are you going to choose? The fear or love, right? And it's very applicable to right. like Bitcoin because like, especially when people are having this either FOMO or FUD, the FUD, like fear of uh, uncertain, uncertainty, right? When it comes to fear and point. uncertainty, yeah. yeah. And yeah. doubt, yeah. <laughs> so that, yeah. That come from there. Exactly. So uh, maybe my last question would be um, for small business owner, why, why should small business owner have Bitcoin as their reserve, do you think? Or, or what, right. what, would you, so, what would you suggest for them, for small business owner in this time? All right. So first of all, uh, as a small business owner, I think it's very important that you have a reserve. Mm -hmm. In fact, for all of us, learning, learning how to manage our money, you need to have a reserve counter where your money goes in there and you don't touch that money until you really need it or you're going to invest into something good. So you should always have that reserve account. Now, a portion of my reserve account is in Bitcoin and a portion is in uh, cash, mm -hmm. right? So not all of it is in crypto, right? And within my crypto bunch, I've got Bitcoin, I've got Ethereum, and I've got maybe one or two different alts. Mm -hmm. And I just focus on that. The reason being is that there's no other asset class in the world right now that can give you the kind of returns that Bitcoin is giving you. Mm -hmm. Do I advocate putting all your savings in there? Uh, no, but I do advocate putting some of your savings in there because that will grow, right? You must understand that Bitcoin is a finite resource and you're buying into, basically you're buying a share into the most secure network in the world. Mm -hmm. When you buy into Bitcoin, whether it's 50,000 rupees, 100,000, you're buying a share into the most secure network in the world. And it's a share that cannot be manipulated because there are only going to be 21 million Bitcoin ever produced. Mm -hmm. Right? So when you're worried about, oh man, maybe I should buy it, but it's like 40,000 now or 30 something thousand now, it's a bit high and all that, should I buy it on? We always say, and you know, to stack the stats, right? Mm -hmm. Buy a little bit. 
you know, I was asking you to put in a whole, say today your sales total after you minus everything you made a million rupiah today. Mm -hmm. Put 50,000 rupiah into Bitcoin <laughs> or 100,000, you know, and then just keep it there, lock it there. But you know that you lock it, lock it there and let it grow. Yeah. Because someday you may use it. Someday you may want to use it. Right. Like for me, thank God I had that stash because it's helping us out through the pandemic right now. Mm hmm and you know sure my my bitcoin stack is getting less and less and less but it's okay because you know if it comes down again i'm gonna buy more and i'm, I'm and i stack and i try and make more you know but you just gotta be go with the flow yeah right but if we're stuck in our mind right oh my god da, 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 da. and this is one thing i've learned right when you're stuck in a mindset you're not actually looking at the real thing you're not actually feeling right you can't make the right decision because decisions are made not only through our mind when Mind is only one part, but we make our decision through our feeling, through our gut, through our dreams. Through our, it's a feeling thing, you know. It's like you gotta you make a decision through all of those things, mm -hmm. right? You study and all that, yeah. But then you know you you make a decision based on all those factors. So putting a reserve into Bitcoin, an asset that's constantly growing, is a really great idea because even if you look at the curve of Bitcoin over the last three, four years, five years, or since its inception, you can see where it's going, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, it's, it's, it's going in the right way, right? Should you put all your savings into it? No, mm -hmm. you know, because it's still a risky thing. So one of my guidelines is this, this is one of my guidelines. If I'm gonna invest any money into Bitcoin, I gotta be ready to lose 50% of its value. And I gotta be cool with it. Like if I lose 50%, I'm chill. So say I've got a thousand dollars sex stacked up, saved up, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone's going to be different, right? So maybe some of them are going to say, okay, I, I, I don't mind investing my full thousand dollars into it. Now, if you, if you invest your full thousand dollars and you're okay with Bitcoin coming down by 50% over the next six months to a year, right? Then invest it. It's fine, right? I mean, you, you're okay with that. You got to have that kind of risk tolerance, mm -hmm. right? For the upside. The upside is going to be like it's going to like go up a lot more than that, right? Mm -hmm. So and and if I have like maybe maybe out of my thousand, I'm like I I'm comfortable with a hundred bucks. I'll put a hundred bucks in, and I don't have to worry about it. And uh, then yeah. So that's what that's how I would look at at how how you should stack right now. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeling that maybe the price is too high, and you feel that oh maybe then put twenty bucks in, right? And 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 and. You know, but at least put some, at least have some skin in the game, right? And then get get comfortable with it. But even if you're not there, start learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you can put in ten bucks, I think, or five dollars right now. I, I'm not sure, yeah. but I, I, in Indonesia, the minimum is like ten thousand rupiah. So that's like nothing. <laughs> ten thousand rupiah, right, exactly. Yeah. But you notice this, right? Dave? Yeah, you notice how, and this is great because. This is actually what we're about. We're about the mindset and teaching people about the soul and how to use our minds and our body to create the life that we want. Can you imagine, right? 10,000 rupiah. But yet, but yet, people are still so caught up in their own mindset, here, so fixated on that, that they won't even take 10,000 rupiah out to like buy some Bitcoin, put it in their wallet to learn how to use it and be open to the possibility of that growing. Especially when you see that the banks are giving you, I don't know what the interest rate is in Indonesia right now. What four percent, three percent? That's that's in um, long term, yeah, two three percent. I think the the biggest for five years. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you have to lock your money, and you know, um, yeah. I mean, you could put your bit of savings into into Bitcoin. It could earn you a lot more. Mm -hmm. And there are a host of other cryptocurrency. If your goal is to if your goal is to still hold fiat. Mm -hmm. So, but that's in for another time in, 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 or, you know, another, in another, another section we can talk about <laughs> like, how to invest and all that, right? How to break down, you know, yeah. how to, yeah. But to answer your question, yeah, for sure. I think your reserves, part of your reserves should definitely be in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, from your, from your experience, like Bitcoin has helped tremendously for the business operation and also expansion as well, right? Totally, it's really, really helped me out. Um, 
I would say it's helped help me out so much. Like, yeah, um, I couldn't even imagine me doing the kind of things that I'm doing right now without having gotten involved with Bitcoin and being able to last out COVID mm -hmm. um, without without having those those investments in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, this like this whole almost like an hour we have talking, it's really, really mind blowing. Like we start from relationship with money. We also talk about the relationship with money and Bitcoin and also like how a small business owner should have their, you know, Bitcoin as their reserve. Thank you so much, Mark, for like sharing all of your knowledge and all, all of your wisdom as well. <laughs> You're welcome, dear. I'm, I'm it's pretty sure. A pleasure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're gonna do more other podcasts talking about different stuff as well. This is very interesting. Fantastic. <laughs> well, I can't wait to get back to Ubud and mm -hmm. start back up at the Onion because I think it's very clear direction that I want to take right now is for the Onion to become the center of alternative learning. Mm -hmm. And I think the mind sciences are very important. And I think that cryptocurrency and Bitcoin is a very important topic that I would love to be teaching uh, people to understand. So I'm looking forward to, to going back and doing, setting up all of this and, you know, seeing all of you guys and doing stuff with you guys. So yeah, it's going to be really exciting. So for all the listener or people who are watching in YouTube, if you guys ever come to Ubud, um, Onion Collective is in Ubud. Uh, it's in the south of Ubud. So Please check it out. We they have swimming pool, they have co-working space, they have also delicious food as well. So yeah, thank you so much, Mark, for your time, and uh, hope thank to see you, you back soon. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see you soon. See you soon. Okay. okay. Oh, thank you, listener. See you in the next episode of My Bitcoin Story. Okay, let me stop the recording.